Hello and um, welcome back to Miniature Wargaming Warriors. My name is Ken. Thank you for being patient the last couple of weeks. I know it's been a while since I put an actual video up and not just a live stream, but we're coming back with a Stuart Light tank and how I paint it. Mostly going to be using the airbrush today because I've found that this tool is fantastic for painting vehicles. You can also do a brush painting and I have done in the past and I'll explain that as we go along. Right, this kit has come from Rubicon Models. Really like their plastic kits and I do prefer them to the Atelieri kits when you get from Warlord Games. I think there's a few extra bits that you get to make different variants within the kit itself. There is the option to do some magnetizing here so we could end up with having two or three different variants on one chassis model, which I really think is a nice, a nice concept. So first thing I'm gonna be doing, you notice I've sprayed it with like a metallic lead belcher. The whole purpose of this is to create some natural shading so instead of using heavy washes throughout the whole model what the whole purpose is you go over with black the whole model and then you pick out like panels and areas you want to be maybe a lighter green because we're going to be going green with the americans on this so darker spots will be with the black and then you'll go over white afterwards in certain places which you'll see in a second and when you put the green over you'll get a different sort of toning effect so it creates natural different toning colors which really works well with an airbrush and it's super quick right okay now we're moving on to the white as you can see the white from the airbrush is going on really nice over this black to do this with normal uh, brush techniques we would take a lot of time and that's where you would use washes instead to go over the whole miniature to give it that different tone effect. I'm obviously not going to be using a huge amount of washes on this model, I'm going to be using a little bit on the tracks and some of the metallic parts but for the white itself it's literally a case of just being a bit patient, make sure you get good coverage where you want it to go and after that we follow on with the green so I'll catch you then. Okay, so that's the white completely done now. We're moving on to the green. The green I'm going to be using is the Army Green from the Army Painter. To thin it down, I use some airbrush thinner. I get it to like a milk consistency. And as you can see, as I'm spraying it on, what's happening is it's staying darker over the black and it's also going over the white and you can see the different toning effects. It looks really good at the end after all the green's dry. So I shall see you at that part. Now that the green's done, you can see those different tones I was going on about down the side of the tank there. It looks really good. I'm now going to be going over with some lead belcher from Games Workshop. Again, I thin this down a little bit with some airbrush thinner. And I'm just going to be painting the metallic parts, so like the tracks and just underneath the chassis here. I'm just going to try and get this quite metallic. Um, reason for this is I'm going to be putting a brown over it anyway to make some sort of weathering effect. So you're not going to see a huge amount of metallic, but I just want to go over there with a nice base coat. What's really nice is with the tracks, if you can get the tracks right, it really helps and makes the tank pop a little bit more. If you just left them playing without any washes or anything like that, sometimes it can look a bit boring. I always like to weather my tracks, so very rarely will you actually see them, so like their original metallic colors. I normally go with browns, a uh, couple of different variants, which we'll see in a little bit. 
If you're liking the content you're seeing or think I can do some improvements, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get back to you. All the feedback's really appreciated. So also with the metallics, I just pick out certain aspects. So like, I pick out um, like metal bars or little bits where there could be a bit of wear and tear, just to show the paintworks had a bit of a bit of use. So it's not factory finish. Gives a bit of life to the model, and I think it looks really good. Right, so now that is nice and dry, we're going to come in with our first bit of weathering. So I'm going to be using like a earthy sort of brown, so like a mud brown. And I'm going to be going over the tracks with that. Pretty much straight over. I'm not being picky, I'm not picking spots. I'm just going for pretty much everywhere. Because in my eyes, if it's going for a field, the tank's going for a field, it's going to get pretty clogged up with mud. I do this on both sides of the track. I also pick out bits on the hole as well and just above where the tracks would be so you could like encounter like mud splatter and things like that making sure i get around the front and the back of the tank as well because if you just got bits on the side it doesn't look so realistic i like to pick out little mud spots as well it's just a preference for me and how i like to do my vehicles Right, so this tank is going to be an American tank. I am going to use the transfer sheet that comes with the Rubicon selection of models, and it is really good to be fair. You get the British and the American variants. Uh, transfers are pretty self explanatory. All you need to do is pop a little bit of water onto them. I'm just going to go with the two stars because I want to keep it nice and basic. I haven't decided yet what company or what division this tank's going to come under so i'm not going to put those on just yet and i might do it at a later date but i'm just going to stick to stars on the side little tip for when you're doing transfers especially when you're airbrushing made a little mistake and you might notice that you might not but if you're putting water onto the painted surface when you're airbrushing and it hasn't completely dried it can rub away the paint quite easily so i recommend you leave it to dry completely before applying transfers Transfers can be a little bit finicky, but again, a little bit of water you can get moving about just with uh, the end of a brush. I know this has been a quick tutorial, but I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. Like I say before, if you've really liked it, you want to put a comment in the comment section below, give it a share and a thumbs up. If you didn't really like what I was doing, uh, why not give me a bit of criticism? Oh, it's always welcome. And anything to help me improve with the hobby would be really appreciated. But like I say, basically you can follow this similar technique with using a brush. You've just got to remember to keep your paints really thin. You're going to take multiple layers of doing each, day, each bit. So like the green may take three or four layers, you know, the white especially if you're going to do this. Will take a lot of layers but you can you can do it i have done it it doesn't look as good as when it's with an airbrush it is a really helpful tool for people when they're painting vehicles and it really does speed up time
So the final bit of this paint job is going to be some metallic. So I'm going to be using lead belcher again. Just going to give it a little dry brush over the tracks. I'm not going to completely cover. I'm not going to try and catch every edge. I just want to show that there is still some metallics underneath all the mud. I'm also going to pick out the tools that are on the top and some of the caps. Each to their own. You might want to leave these as the green, but I think it just gives the actual tank some more life. And there we have it, guys. There is the completed Stuart Light tank for the Americans. I'm going to be using this tank in, say, Normandy and also going into Germany in 1944. Really excited about getting it on the table because the rules are really good with bolt action. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And remember, give us a comment and a like. And don't forget to share and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.